Hi, today we're going to take a look at creating a simple snowflake design in Affinity Designer and we're going to create it in a way that you can make it really customizable. So I got my inspiration from this from a Kleenex box and I want you to take a look here at what's going on. Now, the picture didn't turn out super great, but we've got these diamond shapes with another colored diamond inside and then some dots in between the leaves and then we've got this other kind of shape that's uh, kind of like a diamond with a sort of another diamond on top and then there's these yellow diamonds inside and then we've got another shape that's more like these little spears and so as we look at some of the different patterns on here let's take a look at this so here we've got these yellow diamonds on top of this white shape but no spears here, they just turned off the yellow diamonds, but there are these spears in between all the different petals. Here we've got just petals with the diamonds in between and dots around it. And uh, this one you can't really see, but let's take a look at the other picture here. Now let's move this off to the side here. So here we've got these white diamonds with the yellow diamonds and the spears. And so you can see they've basically just reused this kind of spiky pattern, this petal pattern, and an inner diamond pattern in different combinations and recolored it. So let's take a look at creating that in Designer. And so we're going to end up with something like this that we can turn off different layers. So we can turn off the center petal, we can turn off this, we can turn off one group of spikes, or we can use the other group of spikes. We can turn off the dots. Let's get rid of the these ones. So we can create all sorts of different variations in this. And so you can use this in your patterns and recolor it in different ways, resize it so that they all appear in uh, different sizes as they have done here. You could take, you know, just the, uh, here they have pretty much just the spiky element and there's just a very faint petal underneath it. So I think what we can learn from kind of trying to replicate this is we'll learn how to use the rotation tool and we'll learn how to create a simple pattern that we can group different elements together with and then recolor them and create a whole bunch of different shapes for our patterns and designs. So let's get started. So I'm going to create a new file. So file new and I'm going to switch it to pixels and we'll just make a 500 by 500 pixel artboard because we're just creating this one shape. So the first thing I need to do is create uh, a circle in the middle. So I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and let's just create a perfect circle and it doesn't need to be too big and you can always go and just change it to an exact number here just to make sure it's it's uh, the same sorry an equal size and I'm also going to just center it I do have my magnetics turned on um, I'm going to get rid of the stroke on this and we're just going to give it a really nice bright fill. It just helps everything be very, very visible as we build things and we can always recolor later. The next thing I want is a diamond. So that's found under this last shape tool. There is an actual diamond tool and we are just going to draw a diamond petal. And let's just color that something different. Uh, let's just give that a blue. And then I'm going to move that into the center and align that. Um, and so let's actually shrink this down a bit. Let's make this the little one that's inside. And then I'm going to copy and paste this make that copy a different color and then I can enlarge it that's maybe a little too big and then I'm going to go up here and move it to the back and then I can kind of tweak the way that it aligns 
and there we go. So for ease of duplication, I'm just going to group these two together. So selecting both of them and control G to group them. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to rotate them, but I want to rotate them around the middle point of this circle. So I'm going to go up here to enable transform origin. It kind of looks like a, um, like a site from a, a gun. <laughs> Not that I would know anything about that, but um, then I'm going to take that point that appears and drag it down to the middle. And so I want it to be exactly in the middle of the circle and I want to let my guides kind of show me where that is. So with the selected, I'm going to control J to duplicate and I'm going to want four around this way and around the second half of the circle. So I'm going to go into the rotate of the transform tool and do 180 degrees divided by four, enter. And so that moved it over. Now I can control J again to move it around that rotation point. And so now we've got our first shape created. So the next thing I'm going to create is the little spiky thing. And um, I'm going to do that by just creating a narrow rectangle. And we'll just do that off to the side here. And let's give that a different color. And then I'm going to go back to the diamond tool and create another diamond. And then we will move that diamond. Sorry, not the point. Let's get rid of this transform origin point thing for the moment. We will move the diamond on top. That looks good. I'm going to gather it all and select it and then use my add shape tool and that will join those two pieces together. So now I want to position them and this is the part that it takes a little bit of trial and error um, to get positioned correctly. You could probably do some math and get this right but um, I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and so I'm going to try and bring this pretty close to this circle and then rotate it so it kind of comes just straight out the middle. That looks pretty close. I'm going to take magnetics off and just rotate it a hair more. In fact, I'm going to nudge it a little bit and rotate it slightly. And you can also give it some precise numbers here. So it's at negative 67.1. Let's see what it looks like if I do negative 67.5. That is pretty close. We can always tweak it a little bit. Let's go down a bit. All right, so now we're going to select this. We're going to go back to Enable Transform Origin, grab this little drop dot from the middle, and bring it to the center of the circle again. And I need to get my uh, magnetics back on so that I can position it exactly in the middle. So now I can rotate this as well. So with it selected, I can go Control J to duplicate. And we'll do 180 divided by 4 as the rotation again. But you can see that didn't actually place it in between two petals. But that's OK, because we actually want some of these spears on top of the petals and some in between. So I'm going to continue to Control J. And you'll see that every other one ends up between and every other one ends up on a petal. So I'm going to keep going until I have them between all the petals and I have them on all the petals. There we go. All right, so now we have all our little spiky things. You know, you can make some adjustments if you want. Um, I think in my original here I have the spears. Let's see where the spears went. Um, not that one, this one. I have these spears kind of just at the top of the petals, so you could do that. Um, and then these ones are a little bit shorter. So you can kind of make some adjustments there. So I could select with my shift key held down all the ones that are in between. And continuing to hold shift, I could just um, 
bring these all down and then move them back into the center. So the other thing I can do, actually, I shouldn't have let go of that selection, is I'm going to select all of these. And I'm going to control G to group them. So now these are all grouped together. And I'm going to bring them up out of this area here. And let's actually group I'm going to ungroup all of our petals that we grouped here. So I'm going to select them all, Control Shift G to ungroup them all. And then I can grab in my layers panel while holding, sorry, holding Control. I can grab all the yellow ones. And group those. And then I can grab all the blue ones and group those. So now I've got my center point. I can turn on and off. I've got all the blue diamonds that I can turn on and off. And I've got all the middle spikes, sorry, the petals that I can turn on and off. And then I have also grouped the spikes that are in between. So while we're at it, let's grab the rest of the spiky things. And uh, let's just give them a different color. Let's give them uh, kind of a purpley blue. And we will also control G to group those. All right, so now we have almost all of the elements that we need. We're going to um, turn off the fuchsia ones. And now let's create those little dots in between. So holding shift, let's just make a little circle. Uh, let's make this pink and uh, it has no stroke on it so that's good and now we want to um, move the origin point of this down to the center so same thing we've been doing so control J to duplicate and then 180 degrees divided by 4 in the rotation sorry let's undo that it didn't did not duplicate for me control J there we go and then with it still selected, 180 degrees divided by 4, and then Control J to continue that same duplication. And now that we've got all our ellipses, I'm going to select the top one in the layers, I'm going to select the bottom one, and we can group those all together. And so now we can turn these on and off as a group, and we can recolor them as a group. So the only thing we're missing now is the object in the middle. So I'm going to use the cloud tool for this. So in your shapes uh, area, you can find the cloud tool. And I'm just going to hold shift and draw this. And I know that I've got eight petals, so I'm going to go up to bubbles and just um, enter eight in there. And we can give this a color of... Uh, Oh, I don't know. Let's give it a green. I'm not really worried about color scheme at this point. I am just trying to build this. So this looks like it is centered there. And we can also decide whether we want to move this to the front or the back. So let's stick it on top of everything for the moment. And then if you wanted it to be bigger, so the original um, Kleenex box image, if I can grab this photo here, um, there was sort of a cloud-like thing, you can see it here, um, that went out fairly far. So you can just decide how big you want to make this. So we can select this and just kind of make it a little bigger, move it back to the center, and then let's just um, go to the swatches and we'll give it a gold color. And I will move it to the very top so that it's over everything. And, all right, so now we've got pretty much everything grouped. So I could go ahead and I could like find a palette that I liked and I could color this and say, let's make this a pink and this uh, 
spiky part we'll do like a light blue and this purple part we can make no that's gross um, purple maybe let's try purple um, so you can do a lot of different coloring once you have this all set up. So now we can turn off that center, we can turn off our petals on and off, we can turn off the group of dots, which is, which one is that? That is this one. We can use these sets of spikes, we can use both sets of spikes, and actually let's grab these ones and make them a different color so they're obvious. Um, about yeah, this was kind of gold. That was kind of cool. Okay, so we can create those spikes. We could make these spikes go on top of this one, so we could move this down below, so that the golden ones go on top of the petals. So there's all different ways that you can mess around with this to create different sorts of objects, all with kind of a snowflake theme. So we could turn. Uh, the dots back on with this. Um, so lots of different options here. So hopefully that gives you some inspiration for creating a geometric snowflake design and creating different layers that you can recolor to different palettes as well as turn different elements on and off to create coordinating snowflakes that you can then go ahead and use in borders, in seamless patterns, uh, digital papers, whatever you want to use them for.